Hello, hello. I hope you guys are excited for a very fun project today from our friend Trisha. We have a live beating party that you do not want to miss. And uh, we also have some new things on our website that I wanted to share with you as well. First off, how are you, Trisha? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing good too. We were chatting a little before that you had had a, a double knee replacement, but you're doing really well. Yeah, I've recovered is, real well from it. To a point where I used to have to use a handicap cap placard and I don't anymore. So oh, <laughs> it's a huge I'm so. so glad. I'm sure there's a ton of people out there that have had a similar situation or are contemplating a similar yeah. situation. So um, it's really nice to hear that you're feeling well. And we're glad to have you on a live beating party with us. Well, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Have we done one before? I feel we like did, we've had one. We've had one before. Yeah, we did one. Um, but this is our second one. Of course, we've been talking about it for a while. It's just how, you know, in the industry, it takes some time sometimes to work some things through. But yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. Well, Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio uh, came to be um, after I began beating due to health issues. Um, I established it to try to, since I could not work my normal jobs anymore, I established my business so I could sell my jewelry and the things that I enjoyed making that was therapy for me to make some money, you know, to put, put toward life in general. Um, Pink Puddle Jewelry Studio has been um, a godsend for me. Um, I enjoy everything that comes along with it. Um, I've developed it into a YouTube channel. Um, I'm on all the social medias. Um, it's enabled me to do live teaching as well as video teaching. Uh, just have been, it's been a real gift in my life. Oh, that's awesome. And do you have an Etsy page? Is that right? I do also have an Etsy. Yes. And I have my jewelry pieces on there. Um, I don't have all of them on there by no means because I'm producing multiples daily. But, uh -huh. <laughs> um, so, but yes, it gets, it's slowly getting in there, everything that I make on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have, I do have the Etsy. And like I said, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Atricia's Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. And I do go on there and teach and show hauls and unboxings, all kinds of fun stuff. So, so if they picked one place to follow you, would you choose Instagram? Do you no. think? Or YouTube? I am not an Instagrammer. Okay, where would I'm you on there? Follow? I just it's not my thing. I would say uh, go to YouTube and follow me on there uh, okay. first, and then if you're a TikToker, go over there because I'm more of a TikToker versus an Instagrammer. So cool. All right, <laughs> I'll make sure we're following you on TikTok. I don't know if we are. Um, I have admittedly fallen short on TikTok lately. Well, it, it, I, you have plenty of others. I know. <laughs> It's not like you don't have anything to do, Sarah. You have you to know. put it on LinkedIn, threads, Instagram, yep. Facebook. What's that other one called? <laughs> That's my daily, so my funny. daily morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Kristen's adding the TikTok link. And so if you guys want to go Good. follow her there, you can do that. That will be yep. so much fun. As you may have noticed, I'm doing a giveaway. The information is at the bottom of the screen. You must be here at the end to win. I am giving away a Halloween hustle design kit this hour. So all you need to do is comment hashtag trick or treat only comment once it'll only count you once it's an automatic giveaway tool. Um, but we would love to give you a kit so that you can join us on our Halloween adventures next month. I'll be opening that kit. Is it next week already? It's the end of September already, so, isn't it? Almost, yeah. What in the heck? My kids have been <laughs> hassling me every day to put up the Halloween decorations. Every day. Every day. I'm like, no, not today. I'm too busy today. Nope. nope but don't maybe have it in me. Can. <laughs> so I told them today, if you help me clean the house this weekend and I have then free time, I will help you with the Halloween decorations. That's a good deal, <laughs> I think, for you, right? 
<laughs> That's one thing. I don't have kids, so I can't may have them do my housework. And I do miss that opportunity. <laughs> uh -huh. So everybody give me a thumbs up or a heart if you think that's a good deal, that that's the deal they should take. I think so. <laughs> I think it's a good deal. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some new beats while Trisha gets settled on her a camera setup. We added some beautiful new Peruvian ceramic beads to the shop uh, today. They come in lots of beautiful colors, like some really good fall colors. Um, this deep dark purple, this dark blue, the brown, the orange, the black, this garnet color, absolutely stunning. You can get this whole kitten caboodle, a whole bundle at 30% off, or you can go in and buy eight, the, the color strands that you prefer the most individually. Um, but I think you should just do the whole bundle. They're really beautiful beads. They're solid colors and they are big whole beads. So they are going to work with your larger materials as well as our regular soft flex um, in 019 or 024. But you could do silver silk, leather. Um, you could do any sort of big fat cording like that big fabric cording. Um, we should send some of these to Nile, Kristen. I feel like he would just love these and they would work really well uh, with some of his designs that he makes. So maybe we'll send a bundle to Nile and see if he does something magical with them. Uh, but I hope you'll pick up a bundle for yourself. You can find these at softlexcompany.com. We also released the last of our uh, customer appreciation week bags. Let me see if I can find mine. I think I dropped it. There weren't very many left. They're on the website right now. We're selling uh, what we have left for just $24.95. The bag itself is worth $19 um, if you were to just buy the bag. And then it has some really fun goodies in there from a few different businesses. If you've received your bag from last week, please give us a shout out in the comments and tell everybody who hasn't gotten one yet how great it is. It's a very nice quality bag using Kristen Fagan's original artwork in the background. Um, don't miss out on these. We've got, um, I think we've got like a couple dozen and that's it. So when they're gone, they're gone for good. Uh, so go shop those now and you don't have to have a minimum order to buy this uh, last little quantity of them. Um, they're $24.95 as an item price. So you can just purchase the bag if you want, and then maybe add a bundle of these great uh, ceramic beads to it too. All right, I'm gonna flip over to Trisha and she's got a really fantastic bracelet that she's gonna show us how to make. I'm gonna go um, mute Trisha and then I'll just pop questions on the screen if you can see them okay. Does that sound okay. all right? That sounds good. So for example, can you see that little statement? Yep. Perfect, yep. Awesome. Okay, I'll pop them on as they come up, okay? Okay, sure. Okay, guys, so we are going to make this really fun wave bracelet today. We're going to do it in some fall colors just to kind of change it up a little bit. But all you need for this is some five millimeter fire polish. I have two different colors here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're going to need um, 27 uh small fire polish beads for this is for a six inch bracelet so if you need to make bigger you will need more you need some 11 o seed beads these are just check seed beads that i have use whatever you have and you're gonna need your uh duos and this is also the the uh, super duos here so you're gonna need some crimps some jump rings and of course a clasp so this is really fun to make. It actually, I was inspired by a design that is done normally with beading thread. Um, I've seen some seed beaters create something like this. Um, and I thought, you know what? I bet I can do that with my soft flex. So that's exactly what I did. So what you're going to want to start out doing, guys, is you're going to want to cut three 15 inch pieces of your favorite soft flex. And I'm doing this in the brown color to go. This is actually. Sorry, not the brown color. This is bronze. 
This is the bronze soft flex. So what I want to do then is once I have those three 15 inch pieces cut, <clears throat> I'm going to line the ends up here. And I'm just using number two crimps tubes on this and it seems to work well. So I'm going to take this number two crimp and I'm going to put it over top of all three of those wires and it takes a little bit of finagling sometimes to get it on there, but you can do it. Just takes just a minute, guys. And then if you get two in and you just have one left to go in, go ahead and push your crimp down over those two. And then you can just take your um, third one and push it up through. I only got one in there. So you can do them one at a time if it's easier for you, which, as you can see, is easier for me. So there's two. And then we want to do our third one. So the reason we're using three <clears throat> strands is because we're going to need two strands for our duos. And then we're going to need the third strand to go through the middle for the uh, fire polish. Okay. So we're going to get those lined up again. I'm going to bring my crimp up, kind of get everything nice and flat so I can get a good crimp on it. And I want to leave some... <clears throat> length on the end because we're going to put another crimp on to make our loop our loop so i did make this one with just one crimp on the end and it is possible um it's a bit of a fight to get that four strand back through so to keep it easy uh just do two crimps do your first one with your three and then your second one's going to be with to make your loop so i'm just going to crimp this once i have everything all lined up let's put a nice little crimp on there and fold that over. And then I'll go in and I'll pick my longest strand and leave it. And just trim back the other wires to the crimp we already did. Okay. Oops. It's a little finagling here, guys. This whole bracelet, you'll see, it's, it's, it's really fun to make once you get the hang of it. But it can be a little fiddly at first. But don't let it discourage you. So now I have this one strand left and I'm going to put another crimp on it. And I'm just going to fold that wire back through that. Okay. Pushing it down through that top crimp like you would normally do when you're making a loop on the end of your work with Softlex. And I'm going to want to put those, line those up and make my loop into the size that I want it. And I can see it's probably hard to see because everything's so tiny. And, and then we're just going to go in and just give that another, give that a crimp. And then fold that over as well. I like to fold mine over. You can leave them flat if you want to. I know a lot of people like to crimp with different crimp pliers. These are just the ones I'm on that I've been using lately, but there are tons of good ones out there. And then again, I'm just gonna take my cutters and cut that off. So now we have the end of our bracelet. Now guys, keep in mind on all these crimps that we're using, you can also use crimp covers to put over them and it'll give it a much nicer finished appearance. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top two strands and I just want to look here at my strands and see which one is giving itself to the top two, which ones are. So I want to take this one and then this one. You can kind of see how your wires are laying as to what's going to be the best for that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start putting on my duos. I'm going to take one strand, my duos and my seed beads. So I'm just going to do this. Um, with a random coloring here, because I thought this mix was super pretty. So we're gonna put a, a, on a duo, a seed bead, a duo. We have eight duos to put on each section, okay? A seed bead, duo, seed bead, duo. So now we have on four. We have seed beads between each one, but we don't want a seed bead on the end. We just want our duo on the end, okay? 
and we're just going to go back and forth picking up seed beads and duos until we get to eight of them. Make sure I'm getting a variety of colors on here. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes you just have to slide stuff down so it doesn't come off the end when you're picking them up. You just use the end of your wire just like a little needle and pick up your duos. So we are at, let's see, two, four, six, seven. We need one more. Let's do a yellow. Okay. So we have eight duos on and seven seed beads. Okay. And we're at the top two here. This first one, especially when you're doing the first curve can be a little tough. But once you get through that one, they do get easier, guys. So there's two, four, six, eight. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that second strand down there. <clears throat> and we don't have any seed beads along the bottom. We're not going to put in any seed beads because that's what's going to give us our curve on our bracelet. So we're just going to take that end and we're going to start feeding it through the holes in the duos on the bottom. Make sure your other wires are out of the way so you can do it. And I just work through one at a time. You can pull it through. And it does make it a lot easier if you just do one or two at a time. Especially if you're like me and you have um, tremors in your hand sometimes. It just makes it easier to do the one at a time. So we're just going to pull those through. <clears throat> there I cut two if they're lined up just right you can do a couple at a time and I'm just keeping these closer down to the bottom just so they're easier to get to and they don't slide off the wire as I'm working all right come on through and that's what's nice about soft flex. It has so much flexibility to it. You can do these kinds of things and it won't kink on you. <clears throat> One of the many things that's nice about it, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's put our last one through. And pull that. Okay, and you can see how we're sitting there. We have both of our wires through our duos up here, and then we have a duo or a wire stand out here that we're going to put our fire polish on. And we're going to put three fire polish. So I'm just going to pick up a variety of those and just kind of go back and forth on my coloring. Okay, once you get those three fire polish on, again, these are five millimeter, we're going to go back up here to the end. My work is clear up here by our loop. And I'm going to go back to the end here, to this end, and we're going to put a crimp on over toggle all three wires again. And this is um, nice to coordinate your crimps and your wire and everything together. Um, <clears throat> unless you're using crimp covers, then it really doesn't matter. But I'm just pushing that down and I'm pulling, I'm pulling this way and pulling it up to my work. So now that you have your crimp on, you have your arch here and your three fire polish, you're going to do your adjusting on your piece before you crimp. So the closer in I'm pushing this crimp, the more of an arch I'm going to get on my beads. Because like I said, we did not put C beads on that bottom part. Okay, so work that in until you get the arch and the shape that you like. You're probably going to have a little bit of wire on either side of your um, fire polish. But that's okay. It gives them more movement and looks nice in my opinion. And you can see here, guys, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, how in the world are we ever going to clasp a bracelet that's going like this? The thing is... Um, once you get this put together and the other ends um, will usually end up poking up the other way. And even if it doesn't, it's fine. 
it's still clasped together perfectly fine and will lay nice for you. So now that we have that <clears throat> crimp on there, we're going to take our crimp pliers in and give it a squeeze. And then we're just going to fold that over. And there we go. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. You know me. I always have to have my nails done. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the opposite. So as you can see on this brace that we're going back and forth on where our arches are. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to go to these top two now. Okay. Cause we're going to do our, we're going to do our arch. We want it to go the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we want it to go underneath like this was like a rainbow. This one's going to be the opposite. So we're going to put on our duos and our seed beads. Eight, just like we did. Going back and forth. And once you get this down, you just have to figure out how many sections you will need uh, to make the size of your bracelet that you want. And what I do is I just keep measuring as I'm working. Once I get a section done, I'll measure it and then kind of figure how many more I need. The reason I do that, that I can tell you it takes these this many sections for a six inch bracelet or this many sections for an eight inch bracelet. This one has nine sections in it and it, I have a seven inch wrist and it fits me. But then I made this one today and it only has seven sections and it will fit me. So it's your tension. Your tension is what's going to be the telltale on what you need as far as that goes. Okay. As far as sections go. All right. So we're going to pick up another C bead. Another duo. And we're just going to go back and forth with that. So we have two, four, six. We need two more. <clears throat> okay. So we have our eight on. And now we're going to take this wire right here that's right directly underneath it. And we're going to put that through just like we did the other one. We're going to put that through the holes of the duos without seed beads between them. Okay. Same thing. Chin through. Now, guys, you can also, when you're doing this, um, put a spring on the end of your wire as you're putting the this second wire through your duos to make sure they don't slide down on you. I just kind of try to keep them all up above with blocking like my thumb there to keep them from sliding. But you could certainly do that. Okay. We're just going to keep on with that. We got two that time. Okay. So now we have that done, we're going to do our arch is going to go this way. Yes, this way. There we go. 
So we're going to put on our, just trying to slide these down. Make sure they're on the side I want them to be. <clears throat> and then we're going to add our three fire polish. On there. And then we're going to go up to the end again and put another crimp on. Let me get one more to get through there. So I'm just going to put it through individually. There we go. And we're just going to slide that crimp down just like we did before. But we're going to put, we want our arch to be on this side. So we're going to just push that down as we go. to make our arch. And sometimes you have to pull the strands individually to get them through where you want them to be. Okay. So now we have the other side. Okay. So again, we're just gonna get that where we want it. Don't want it to be too tight because you don't want it to be um, warped. And then again, we're just gonna crimp. Is your color mix available to purchase or did you mix them yourself? Um, it is available to purchase, but um, I got mine at Hobby Lobby. It's called Raku Mix. Um, and I think they are discontinuing, but you could certainly look for this name of this mix online mm -hmm. and see because usually, you know, if one person is discontinuing one business doesn't mean that another business won't be carrying it. Yeah, and you can definitely also look. I know um, our friends at beadshop.com. Um, oh, yeah. Candy Cooper does interesting yeah. mixes of things like Super Duos, too. Yeah, so she has a ton of Super Duos. I know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely shop small we first, love, guys. We, yeah, we love Hobby Lobby, too, yeah. though, of course. They yes. carry Softlux, too. Yes, and have do. for many years. They've been a huge support to our small business. That's so great. Thank you when you're able to get into Hobby Lobby too. Yes, definitely. It's one of my favorites. So we're just going to start on our next section. And like I said, as you go, just measure. I know this is nowhere going to be big enough. So I'll probably wait till I have like four or five um, arches to kind of measure and see where I'm sitting before I start uh, deciding how many sections I'm going to need. Terry can make her own mix. She has a lifetime supply of super duos. Oh, there you go. I <laughs> wish I did, but. I feel you, Terry. I feel you. I think I could probably make my own mixes too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I know my cousin. She is, she's really, Candy Cooper had this one bracelet um, that she made a long time ago on one of her lives. And my cousin and I refer to it as a Candy Cooper bracelet. And it's done with super duos. <laughs> and uh, so she has absolutely gone crazy, the amount of super duos that she has. <laughs> it's insane. But she oh, makes those it. Candy Cooper bracelets like they're going out of style. I know. <laughs> yeah. She's very good at uh, making things that are really interesting, but not too difficult, you know? Right. Yep, and that's always the key. Yeah. So we're two, four, six, and... Hey, Chris, will you check to see if we have any Halloween Hustle bead strands left? I am very tempted to use mine right now, but then we Ooh. may not have any for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, now. We have any left. Yeah. <laughs> Share the wealth, you know. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you guys go without a lot of stuff for the customers. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here, guys. We're going to run it through our bottom hole. Okay. 
And the one nice thing about this bracelet, it, it is actually a simple technique. It's just you have to get the hang of it. And once you do, you can do as many sections as you want. You can make them into earrings. You can do a lot of different things. Necklaces. Be a cute necklace, too. I'm sorry if you hear my neighbors in the background. They, <laughs> they have kids and dogs, so... <clears throat> Well, you got a lady right here on the live stream <laughs> with kids and dogs. So, yeah. so there's anybody who tunes into my show is usually yep. ready for one or the other or both at any given yeah. moment. <laughs> Mine too. Everybody knows the girls make themselves known every time I'm on here. My my dogs. So uh -huh. <laughs> they always have to say something. Sarah James always laughs because they're just like there <laughs> every time. That's their job, though, protecting the house, even if it is a robin outside or something. Okay. So, again, same thing, guys. We've got our other side done. We're just going back and forth with taking the top two strands. So, I did these top two for this time. Next time, we're going to grab these two. Okay? Top, bottom, top, bottom. Okay? So, now we can put our fire polish on. And our crimp. Yeah, so. And I'm just going back and forth on my colors of fire polish, guys, just to keep some interest in the piece. Which I know the mix, the mix is nice because it gives you that interest without having to work too hard on coming up with color designs. And we're just putting our crimp over the three, or as many as you can get, <laughs> and then your other one, other ones through. So I have one left here. I couldn't get it through in one swipe, so I'm pushing that one up through just like last time. Okay, and we're just moving that down the cording, down the soft flex, and. Doing our adjustments. So, slowly working that down with my thumb and my pointer finger to get our little arch in our piece. And again, I'm going back and I'm going to pull some individual strands here to get the look that I want. So, I'm going to pull a little bit more on that one. And then, we need to find our fire polish strand, which I think might be that one. There it is. Okay. And then we're just going to crimp. Make that one just a smidge tighter so it goes with the other ones. And then just a squeeze. I see someone asking if you can do it with Tila's. You know, I've never tried it with Tila's, but I think probably any two hole bead would work. As long as you have that top one, you can put the seed beads between and then the, uh, the bottom that you can just run the strand through. <clears throat> okay. So now we're dropping down here. And I want this one to be the ones, the side that has the seed beads. So we're starting with our seed bead duo right back. Four. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Good guard dog. <laughs> they are. 
<laughs> it's their it's their their dad coming home. So I don't know how good a guard dogs they are, but that's all right. They don't know that till they get downstairs, I guess. But oops, I put one extra seed bead in there. Yeah, they are. If you count barking as guard dogging, they are good uh, <laughs> guard dogs. They're just doing their job. That's right. That's what I always say until they drive me insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly. Yeah, All right. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and our neighbors uh, just got just got their dogs not too long ago. So this has mm. been a fascination for my our youngest one. Mm. Our 15-year-old doesn't really care, but right <laughs> she just worries about food and toys and sleeping mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so we got our eight two four six eight just double check and the same thing that second strand underneath and then take it through this is just beautiful. It's coming together so nicely. I bet a lot of people are feeling inspired. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying this design. Like I said, I made another one um, here in pinks and purples, which, you know, I'll be taking, of course. But <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> if it's pink or purple and I make it, I'm usually like, ooh, I need That's that. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Make one for you, make one for, one me. for me. Yep, yes. exactly. <laughs> I'm sure all of the makers know that well. Right. <laughs> My mom said to me, she goes, you got to stop keeping all the really nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Um, <laughs> she's like, you got to sell, honey. You got to make some money. <laughs> but, but then again... She doesn't hesitate to put her hand up for stuff, so. Right. <laughs> Sounds like a little bit of jealousy to me. Yeah, right? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right, I'm just grab on my fire polish, guys. It, this really couldn't be any simpler. Once you get the hang of it. Yeah, it looks like a really nice pattern. Very relaxing, easy yes. going, low pressure. Yep. Which we love. Of course, yes. That's a big part of why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's relaxed for sure. Okay. And boy, could I use some relaxing. <laughs> I bet. I bet, Sarah. <laughs> I bet. You've Who's got that? your hands full. One long, very long month. Oh, yeah. All right, so I got my... Did you see how slick that crimp went on, guys? I didn't have to put the one strand back through. I got all three at one time. So that's a... <laughs> that's nice. That's a big deal, right? Oh. Oop. And then I'm all talking about myself, and look, I didn't. <laughs> Uh -oh. I was so proud. There we go. <laughs> ah, so proud. And then I'm like, no, you didn't. Happens to the best of us. Yes, for sure. So I'm just going to try to get that one up through there. Oh. A life. So this person would love to have a lifetime supply of super do duos, but she's a super duo ad addict. <laughs> She's been making, she or he, I guess I should say, has been making opera length necklaces using them. Ooh, Ooh that, that sounds, sounds really cool. nice. You post a picture in the Softlex VIB group oh, definitely. of your opera length super duo necklaces. I have to see this. Absolutely. Maria was wondering if you could show how to use a crimp cover. Um, Sure, I can do that. Um, Let me just it, get this crimped off. What's that? I can do it too if you need me to. Just let oh, me know. it doesn't matter. Um, let me just get this crimp put on, and I can show you. Sweet. It's definitely um, 
a learning curve. I struggled and struggled with crimp covers for years. And then my uh, one friend um, told me that it, you have to go in very tiny increments when mm. you're closing them. That's what yeah. seems to work for me. If you use mm -hmm. the, the small increments instead of just cramming down on it. And yes. <clears throat> yeah. They're very delicate. Okay. And like when you think about it, crimps and crimp covers both are very delicate yeah. for the job yeah. that they do. The crimp yes. covers not so much because they're not holding anything together, but they're just set so thin walled mm -hmm. and you're smashing them in some ways. With right. The hair. So you have to be just so delicate and light to the touch with it. Yeah, for sure. Let me just grab my covers here. <clears throat> Colleen is saying how much she loves this design and the beautiful fall mix that you're showing. Oh, thank you, Pauline. I appreciate that so much. Yes, it, it is a beautiful fall mix. I grabbed it when I saw it for sure. I know, Heidi. I was so sad to see that they were scheduled at the same time as us, but that happens sometimes. Yes, it does. Live with Sam um, as well. It just, we can't all coordinate everything. So mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, someone sneaks over the top of my 3 p.m. on Wednesday that I've been <laughs> holding down for A the last time. decade. Yeah. <laughs> I know how you feel. <clears throat> they, folks, you should do that with Jewel Loom School, too. So I understand. So what I do here is I just put my uh, crimp cover into my crimpers. And are those Ontera crimpers? These are Ontera's, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I just take it, and I'm holding it kind of gingerly in there. I'm not squeezing too hard. And I push it over top of my crimp. Yeah. And I say that, and I'm going to be. <laughs> you know how it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take these and put this on the end, though. They do come in different sizes. Yes. Uh, a crimp cover. So usually with a two by two crimp, you might use like a three millimeter crimp cover mm -hmm. or a four millimeter would be even bigger. Make right. sure you get on screen so we can see you. There you go. Oh, so sorry. It's so hard because it's so tiny and you want to be able to bring it up close. <laughs> I have to see you. <laughs> uh, I absolutely adore Neelay and Sam. So yes. anybody that was over watching them, I totally understand. Yeah, I sure. want to watch them too. In fact, I was watching Mile earlier today on a replay. <laughs> it's yeah. fun I hung out with him today. <laughs> He's one of the best. He is. Whoops. You know, make sure I, I may let you do it because I'm I'm fiddling over here. And if you think oh, okay. you <laughs> sure. I can do it. Yes. Let me bring my camera over here and I'll show you what I've been up to while you yes, have been working. Um so mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, I pulled out these wizard and training charms uh, that oh, that we have on the Softbox Company website. I don't know if we've sold out of them, but we are ordering more if we have. Um, and I made Mama and Me necklaces for oh, myself cool. and my three kiddos um, because we my the name of my homeschool is Ehlers School of Magic, so I thought they would really enjoy that. And we're obviously going into Halloween season and they're obviously obsessed with Halloween as I told you at the beginning uh, they're <laughs> housing me to decorate so um, I used the Halloween hustle bead strand that we uh, received from Jesse James beads to match our kit but because these were gold I decided to pull out just the black beads and that left me with a lot of silver pieces that I hadn't used yet and so I broke open one of those black ceramic strands that I had just shown you that are brand new to the Softflex Company website. And I used up some of those beautiful silver pieces. This bead is from the Halloween Hustle. And then I've got some of the silver pieces in here are from that Halloween Hustle strand. And then look at how those upgrade those black ceramic beads. They look so phenomenal um, yeah, those are stunning. with all the silver mixed in with it. So you can do that in any color. Now, I chose black and purple because I'm kind of thinking about Halloween. 
but if you prefer, you know, this really lovely dark purple or light purple, maybe you're a blue person, you could do this similar design, um, just changing out those colors and then changing out your pendant. Okay, so let me grab some crimps. We're gonna crimp old style and then we're gonna add a crimp cover. So let me pick my crimp. I just realized my, in the heat of everything last week, customer appreciation week, I dumped my earrings into my crimp bin here. So uh -oh. let me collect those out of here. I was like, where do I put these? <laughs> Yep, I know that game There's well. There's nine more videos to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hectic week last week. Yes. So those are from last week. They turned out super cute. Oops. And now I can get to my crimp. So I'm grabbing out some two by two millimeter crimp tubes. And I'm going to grab a couple of those. And then I'm going to grab a couple of my three millimeter crimp covers. And I'll grab those in sterling as well. Uh, those, all of these things can be found on the Softbooks Company website. And let me grab a pair of regular crimpers. We don't do those that often. Let's do some taco time today, as Kay had said last week. And then we'll put a crimp cover on it. So if I want this to be stationary, um, one way I can do that is by adding a crimp at the bead. And in this case, I don't think that I need to add another wire in there unless I want to. Because um, the this, this crimping plier digs in a little bit better into the nylon coating. So I don't think it needs that extra wire uh, necessarily. So... I'm gonna take my crimping pliers, and these are the, the regular old style ones. There's a tooth in this back hole, and then the front hole is just completely round. I'm gonna use that tooth first, and that's where I'm gonna create my taco shape. That has like a little seam in it. And then I'm gonna come into the rounder, and I'm going to now round in and I'll go around it kind of a few times to sort of tighten it down. You never need to apply a lot of force with any crimping plier. Again, the crimps are very fragile. They're very, um, very soft metals usually like sterling. And if you apply too much force, you break down the wall of the crimp. So not too much force. Uh, but go around it and make sure it's nice and secure and then always test it. Next, to do your, your crimp cover, you can do a few things. You can grab it up in this plier. I always find that kind of difficult, but I know a lot of people love to do it this way. I usually use a chain nose plier, but I'll give it a try this way. And if it isn't going the way I want to, then I'll switch to the chain nose. But you're going to slide it on the top of that crimp. And sometimes this part I even do just by hand, especially if that crimp cover is just like a little closed up. You yeah. want to get it over the top of it. So it's covering it, right? And it's right on the inside. So here's where you're going to just ever so gently close up. So those two seams meet each other. Try to get them as straight as possible. Go nice and slow. And then I like to overlap it just a little bit. I don't know if you do that, Trisha, but I just kind of- Yeah, just slightly. Mm -hmm. on, slightly on one side and then kind of pinch down mm -hmm. slightly on the other so that it's a little overlapped. If you press on this too hard, it will dent it all up and it won't look nearly as nice as it could if you went slow and really like spent time on it. And there you go. Then that side is okay. secure and I can do the same thing on the other side and it just looks like a little three millimeter silver bead mm -hmm. that I've added to the end there. It does look nice. Yeah, sometimes I really like a crimp cover. Sometimes the magical crimpers are the ticket, you know, either way is totally acceptable. And in fact, it's nice to be able to kind of go back and forth and do both. Right, right. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I always see Neely with the magical crimpers. I'm going to have to get those to try. Oh, I'll send you some. I um, It took me years to get Neely on the magical crimpers, but he's finally there. <laughs> I was just mentioning that the other day. <laughs> it took years because yeah. I think they're kind of hard to get used to. But once you get used to them, it's like one of those things where you're like, why did I ever use those other things? These are yeah. so easy and lovely, but it does right. take a little bit of practice. Well, Let's see all good that. things do. That's true. Dana says, I close crimp covers slightly. Then when I crimp with the seam in the middle of the pliers, the cover closes right up. Ooh, I love that tip. Nice tip. Yeah. Terry says, I am an absolute crimper pusher. I agree. They're they are one of the most important tools in my tool arsenal for sure. Okay. We've got some entries going for trick or treat. If you want to enter, make sure you're commenting just like Caroline did with hashtag trick or treat. Let me see how many entries we have. 63. Wow. 63 entries so far. Awesome. Must be present at the end to win though. So make sure you're still here. Stick around till the end. Um, are you ready for us to flip on back to you and see sure. what you Sure. Yep. I'm just um, doing one more section here, I think. I'm, I already measured, and I think I was at, let's see here. I was at five, so I'm going to add one more section and see if that'll give me my six inches. I have a seven-inch wrist, so I do a six-inch bracelet, and then I can account for the um, jump rings and the clasp. So we'll just do this section, and then we can... Awesome. Finish it up. Looking fantastic. So fall and just yeah, ready I love it. to slip on your wrist. And of course, when I went to purchase these, they only had one of the mix, this color mixes. <laughs> oh, Because I would have grabbed them all. Because this right. is right up my, so, in my wheelhouse. What are your favorite colors to work with? Um, of course, pink. Um, I like uh, turquoise a lot. I like Picasso finish items. Um, mm -hmm. I like things that kind of look vintage. Mm -hmm. um, pr like um, sometimes you can get uh, some real pretty uh, pastel beads that are kind of vintage, vintage looking. And that's like my favorite. Oh. This is probably my second favorite, like the boho colors, you know, uh -huh. But I do like boho as well. But I go more toward like a vintage romance type style in general. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm always curious. I, you know, I have like a, just like anyone else, have this color palette that I love. Mm -hmm. Kristen kind of has a very different color palette for me. Um, yeah. And we sort of marry them together when we're buying all of our beads. Um, but I'm always curious what other things people are into out there. Yep. Yeah, that's what I like. I like the vintage old looking in the pastels. And I don't know, I mean, I guess it's just a vintage romance style, when we call it. You um, know. Joyce, if you want to email info at softflexcompany.com, they'll help you with any order questions. And yes, if it's if the two orders are placed at about the same time, uh, they'll happily ship them together for you. I love that, Kim. <laughs> I love that you 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 Aww. think of me hopefully when you do crimp covers. Okay, we're just in our last section here, and I'm just doing my adjusting to get my shape that I want. Um, I love using lamp work glass handmade beads, Maria. Do you make beads or do you use them in your designs? Terry says she loves greens, blues, and purples. Nice. And somehow she has a lot of red beads. What on earth? <laughs> Well, we go through different stages of bead buying. I've found that myself. And maybe years. you've used up the colors you like the most and you've left right. the colors you don't like as much. Exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. So this is a little um, less than six inches, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to finish this off. And then I can give it to my cousin because she is a teeny tiny wrist. <laughs> Diane, I don't think, are these kits, Trisha? They aren't kits, are they? They aren't kits. This is something I want to start getting into is doing kits and selling them in my shop. I'm just mm -hmm. on the cusp of doing that, but these are not. It's an inspirational idea and... Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be able to get a list of supplies from you after and we can pass yes. that onto our blog for you. Absolutely. To I can certainly do that. Okay. Oh, we got so, two lamp workers here. Lamp workers unite. Ooh, talent. That takes a lot of talent. It so does. I put my last crimp on my last section and I'm just going to take, um, actually I'm going to cut two of the wires off. And just leave one here so I can go ahead and put my loop. And when I'm cutting off my wire, I like to pull and push at the same time. I'm pushing to the right with my plier and pulling to the left with the wire. So then it's going to get you as close up to that crimp as you can get. Now, I know there's a lot of old school people that, and which there's nothing wrong with it, that think you have to feed wire back through for it to be secure. I'm not a believer in that. I think that if your crimp is crimped correctly, you can cut the wire right up to it and it will hold nicely for you. I wanted to note, uh, Caroline mentioned that she started using lamp work beads and she needs a strong wire for medium or size large beads. Yeah, you wanna probably go for our Softlex 024 heavy. Uh, a lot of lamp workers that we know, and we know a lot, we know a lot of them um, for the last 30 years because we've uh, been very uh, deeply ingrained in their um, in their community uh, through ISGB and and just through doing bead shows, uh, glass art bead shows. That 024 is their go-to typically for any lamp work beads uh, because they are a little rough in the center and they can have a lot of weight to them. And so you want something that's gonna really hold up to, um, to that lamp work piece. And they're so important. And sometimes they're really expensive because someone spent a lot of time making them really special. So you want a really strong material um, underneath that lamp work bead. So I just made a basic loop here by feeding the wire back through the crimp and I'm just going to give it a squeeze. So we have loops on either end so we can hook in our jump rings and our clasp. And I'm a firm believer. I used to um, hook my clasps right into the loops that I made on my pieces. And mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago not to do that because um, you, you can use your, um, say if your measurements aren't exactly right, you can use your jump rings to adjust the size and then it's not mm. a goner. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the black beads that I was using today are new Peruvian ceramic beads that can be found at the Softbox Company website. We have them, I think, in 11 colors. Let me count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, 11 colors. And you can actually buy them in a full bead bundle and get every color and get 30% off. Um, so that is like your best buy, but you can buy the individual colors as well. So if you just want black, you can go in and buy just the strand of black beads. Um, they're pretty affordable. They're really pretty and they have nice big holes. So you can use them on lots of different materials. Leather would be gorgeous. With those. Know, wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Stunning. Okay. So I just use my um, jump rings to attach my clasp to my piece. This is just a magnetic clasp. Use whatever you like. And there is our finished piece. Again, like I said, you can put your crimp covers in between to give it a nice finished look. Okay, we have a, oh, Squirrel and Pearl says, I have always avoided orange until recently. There are some gorgeous shades of orange beads out there. Why did I avoid that color for so long? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm that way with yellow, really. So I, I understand. Started on yellow. Mm -hmm. I love yellow. Do you? <laughs> yes. 
Well, some people do. It's just not my no. color that I go to. I have some yellow beads. I just don't have a ton of them, you know. I but. feel like our monthly kits have been such a blessing for me to try colors that are outside of my regular color family. Yes. Um, and one of them would probably be orange and like earthy colors. I don't gravitate towards browns and oranges. I do like yellow, like pops of yellow. Um, but those, that's still pretty bright, you know, like mm -hmm. those more earthy colors. I have a harder time, uh, picking out myself, but when they come in my, uh, you know, harvest moon kit, it's a lot easier for me to be like, oh, okay, I can get behind this color scheme and like test it out and see how it feels. Um, someone had asked if I could put this over my wrist and it, it actually does clip on me. Surprisingly for the size of woman I have, I have a very small wrist. <laughs> nice. that looks but so yeah, good. it's just kind of a cool design, you know, gives you a little bit of interest on your wrist. So yeah, I'm fun. Trying to grab this comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they, they go by so quickly that I'm like, ah, I can't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. What a pretty bracelet. It turned out so good. Oh, thank you. I'll get my camera switched around here. Okay. Let me go to my other screen here. Okay. Awesome. So those little black beads are just like these uh, Peruvian ceramic beads. And again, we have them in a bunch of colors and some really fun fall colors too, um, like this orange. And then I was thinking this garnet color is really fun mm -hmm. for upcoming fall. Dark blue can be really pretty in the fall, especially paired with the right things. Um, so we've got those in the shop. The other beads that I used in this design were from the Halloween Hustle bead strand, which we do have more of, Kristen told me. So uh, you can grab that. I used all of the silver components in this design, and I used all of the black beads from it in this design. So I split it between two necklaces, but it's one bead strand. And with the ceramic beads, and that bead strand, um, and then there's some Rolas in there. That's all I needed. And I had two beautiful designs come out of it. The uh, Wizard in Training comes in a package, I think, of six. And we have some other options that are pretty cute, too. If you're into Halloween, we've got some little mummies, some sweet little black cats. And then look at these adorable ghosties. I can see those little ghosts with little pink um, flatback crystals along the bottom of them. I'll keep that. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, also, one more time, we've got our Halloween Hustle uh, beading kit being opened next week, next Wednesday. I'm going to give one of these away right here at the end of the show uh, in just a few minutes. So it's your last chance to comment in the comments hashtag trick or treat to enter to win the Halloween Hustle uh, beading kit. We also still have our uh, Harvest Moon kit for TGBE Fall Fest. It went into the store just last week and we have plenty of those still in there, but they do tend to go quickly. And then our Monster Mash uh, jewelry making party with Jesse James beads. We have the supply kit and I don't know if they have any bead kits left. I haven't looked on their website. Um, yet, but they may have some left. And let me go here. There we go. Um, so many cute things. We're going into spooky season, and so I'm adorable. Way into it. It's exciting. Those charms. I'm dying for those charms. They're adorable. <laughs> I know they're really cute. They turned out so cute. These little black cats just have my I heart. So I cute. can't wait to use those. They're yes. just. Absolutely. So in the mummies and the ghosts, all of them, oh, they're fun. cute. We're restocking those. So we're getting a little low on the charms, but we have more coming and we have some Christmas ones coming in as well, um, which will be a lot of fun. We're getting a lot of thank yous for your beautiful oh, very jewelry welcome. design. <laughs> you're very welcome, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. 
Oh, good. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and do our giveaway. So I'm going to pull that up. And there we go. Let's see how many do we end up? 76. Whoa, that's big for just a Wednesday wow. at 3 p.m. That's great. So I'm going to go ahead and click draw now. Last chance. Hashtag trick or treat. Anybody typing it in? <laughs> nope. I don't see. It. Nope. That's it. Okay, let's see who our winner is. Let us know in the comments that you're here, and then you're going to email info at softlookscompany.com. Let them know that you won a Halloween hustle design kit. Sandy on Facebook, are you still here to claim your prize? Uh, they will get that out to you pretty quickly, and you may even have it in time for next, um, next week. Let me see if I can... Yep, there she is. There she is. <laughs> congratulations. Okay, congratulations, <laughs> Sandy. Go ahead and email info at softlexcompany.com and let them know that you are our winner for the day. Um, my screen's just going super slow today. Yeah, mine does that sometimes myself here. Like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so nice to see all of you guys here at the live show with Trisha. Uh, she obviously did an awesome job. If you love her project, make sure you click that like and heart button to let us know that you enjoyed it. You can find uh, lots of super duos, uh, not only at Hobby Lobby, which is a great source, but also I saw Kristen post a link to Candy Cooper and oh, to good. our friend Kate at beadshop.com. Um, those are great sources. I would imagine Abby from the Bead Place probably has some super duos too, but there's oh, lots okay. of uh, good small businesses that you can check out for those things too. And then of course you can find the wire, the crimps and tools and all the beads that I showed you today at softlexcompany.com. Please be sure to go follow Trisha um, on her TikTok channel. And then I think you said YouTube was the YouTube. other. Favorite. YouTube's number one. I'm trying to get myself built up to a thousand. I'm only maybe 30 away. So um, awesome. yeah. So once I get there, then I can get my hours up and get monetized. So that's the, that's Wait. the end game you know <laughs> yeah exciting so make yeah, sure you give yeah. her a follow uh Thanks, to guys. thank her for this wonderful tutorial that she shared with us today um becky also says jill wiseman does color coordinated sets of super duos so that might okay. be a really beautiful way to get a mixture of colors that you can self mix for this design and i bet she has a million different beautiful colorways too I'm sure, yeah. um yeah so that's it um we will be back tomorrow kristen and i are doing coffee no tonight i'm zooming kristen's nodding at me she's giving me the wink in the background <laughs> tonight i'm zooming with those of you who have the safari design kit uh, we we sent you a private link for a private party to come hang out, um, and we will be beating together and just having our monthly gab session. And then uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern, Kristen and I are doing Coffee and Craft Wire for our takeover in the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group. I hope you'll join us for that. And then on Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, I will be kicking off the Friday Bead Bash Raid Train for uh, the Whatnot app. Uh, this week, we will have Kay from Bedoria coming after me, and then Abby from the Bead Place will bring up the caboose of the train. So I hope you'll join us on Whatnot. It, that is only available on the app. We are not necessarily streaming it anywhere else. Um, but we have lots of videos, so if you don't like the app, keep hanging out with us here. And on YouTube, if you like the app, then hang out with us there too, okay? So I think that's it. It's a busy week. I mean, we had Customer Appreciation Week last week, and then we just like launched into another super busy week. Kristen's <laughs> taking a nap in the background, you guys. I don't blame her. <laughs> I'm going to pass out from all this work we're doing. 
I said earlier today, who planned all of this? And then I was like, oh, it was me. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> my can't blame past anyone. self is really irritated with my present self. <laughs> I get that. I completely get that. <laughs> uh, sending all of you love, and I hope yes. to see you in all these different places that will be this week to come hang out. And I can't wait for the Zoom tonight. It's one of my favorite things we do every month. I'll see you guys in just a little bit for that at 430 Pacific at uh, 7.30 Eastern. Thank you so much, Tricia. Really oh, a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I always enjoy it. I love spending time.